Welcome to the Bobble On Podcast, where we're committed to providing practical advice and strategies to increase your revenue, unify your team, and create accountability throughout your organization. Let's go. Season two. Episode 14. It's good to have you back, home. Good to be back, back with a vengeance. No okay, kidding. Well, oof. I know. I'm excited. I know. Well, I'm facing, I feel like we like, we're, uh, we're in a game show. Mm-hmm. We're about to like, have to answer six questions for each other. Seven kinds of smoke. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to handle it. Nope. It's a lot of smoke. Absolutely not. <laughs> but today we're going to be talking about some highlights that Pete Dupuy we had on last week. He was great. Yeah. And he said three incredibly important things that you and I want to riff off, dive deeper into, and chat directly to the audience about what, yeah. they, what did you pull? They were super relatable to things we've talked about in the past, but mm-hmm. hearing it from a different industry yeah. and hearing it from a different professional, like it just it, it reinforced the messaging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Pete, thank you for the uh, 40 minutes of fun, but we have only three things you said that we really enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, hashtag Pete. Love Pete. <laughs> Love Pete. But personal best for the last week. Take this. I had a, I had a, I had a, I, I had a hard time coming up with it this last <laughs> week. There was like a lot of fun things. I got a watch. Um, I decided on a new car. <laughs> now, my personal best by far was the birth of my first child, mm. Parker mm. Reese mm. Namoli, mm. and uh, solid name, right? Mm. Yeah, I and, love Parker and Reese, uh, too, of course, Parker. Yeah, and awesome uh, specifically the labor. I, I think yeah. that the delivery was something that you know you prepare for, you think about, you, you yeah. know, whatever. But man, going through it, it just mm. it gave me such a deeper level of respect for women, just in general, mothers, uh, what they go through. Like mm. I knew, understood, like I was like, mom, wow, like <laughs> credit, right? <laughs> but also just kind of uh, connecting me with Sadie even at a deeper mm. level than I than I had been before, which I mm. thought was as was as good as it got, you know. And so Super it, was, cool. it was really neat. That was a powerful moment, definitely like etched in my memory forever, mm. and uh, it was mm. my highlight. That's awesome. Yeah. So now, fast forward to this minute, like you're home, everyone's happy, healthy. Yeah, everyone's happy, mm. healthy. We're super fortunate. He mm. came out just a hair under seven pounds, mm. pretty average. Um, you know, his heartbeat's good, his blood pressure's good, mm. his no, new temperature hasn't been an issue. He's awesome. pooping, he's sleeping, he's crying, he's doing his thing like mm. normal babies would. And Sadie's a rock star. She's just That's handling cool. it and you know, running in stride. I'm, I'm on diaper duty and she's on breastfeeding duty. It's like, mm. which, Makes Those sense. Permanent positions. Yeah, we really couldn't like flip flop. <laughs> we couldn't have switched. We like I'm not like handing her to do the diapers, and then she hands me to breastfeed. But yeah, it's a, is there a, like meet the fuckers? Isn't that yeah, you can't bre- you can't yeah you, you can't yeah. milk me. <laughs> you can't milk me. Greg. I have nipples, but yeah. you can't milk me. I like that. Well, congrats, man. Yeah, it's good thanks. to have you back. Yeah. Um, that was a special day. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, I was. I was upset to to miss a podcast specifically with someone in the baseball world. I know. But that's the beauty of podcasts, is you can listen to it after it's done. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I Pete yeah. did a great job, that you did a great job, and I was, it was fun to listen to. Yeah, Pete's, uh, Pete's great. It's, it's great hearing some, from someone in a, different, in a different industry Yeah, about what their experience is, and you just like, the whole time watching you nod, be like, oh yeah, relate, relate, relate. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to recap yeah. that for sure. You're personal though, let's get back yeah. to that. Yeah, personal best to last week. Um, you know, we had a, a lot of great moments, and obviously, um, you know, meeting Parker uh, was so fun. Uh, it was such an awesome moment. Um, from, uh, from our family, uh, me, the best moment of the week uh, definitely was telling Mason and Emma uh, your child's name, mm-hmm. um, your and Sadie's child's name, because uh, Mason uh, pulls out a Boston accent once in a blue moon, and it's just strange. He doesn't talk like that. But out of nowhere, uh, we're like, oh, it's, uh, the name's Parker. Like, Parker's one of my best friends. He goes, ah, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, we're like, no, 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 it's Parker. He goes, Parker, yeah, Parker. I was like, whatever, wrong with it. And like the, the entire the entire time, he's like, he's like, show me a picture, show me a picture of Parker, show me a picture of Parker. And like he literally didn't even try to go to the ER. All right, so excited to dive into this day today. Pete did such a great job last week. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, breaking down why owning a gym and the niche they chose is relatable to our industry was awesome. It was mm-hmm. great. But he really did say three things that we want to spend more time on, just you and I just chatting and unpacking what he said, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And um, 
The first one that we talked about that really just jumped at us mm -hmm. was that initial meeting they had, mm -hmm. the, the partners together, where they said, we got a problem. We're starting to be known as the baseball guys, mm. right? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk a they little bit about that. They were worried. I mean, I think anyone who who uh, runs into this uh, in their professional world, like you get a little worried. You're like, I, I don't want to be pigeon help. Mm. I don't want to be like an actor being typecast into one role. You know, mm. I don't want to be Michael Scott in the office for the rest of my life, no matter what. And, and I think that's what they were feeling. It's like, mm. oh, if we are known as the baseball guys, no one in another world will want to come to us. Bingo. Right? Yeah. And uh, you heard that in person. I heard that afterwards. And it's like, yeah, we, we know exactly when that moment was for us. It jumps out at us. And you and I found that niche in real estate. And we had the conversation where it was like, everybody else is saying this is a bad idea because profits aren't there. Mm -hmm. It's not master huge condos. It's not huge truckers. It's not tens of thousands of dollars in commissions. Mm -hmm. And these guys over here are making money hand over fist going after big commercial cases. Do we really want to be known as these onesie twosies? Do we want to be Derek Jeter and just hitting singles all day? Which by the way, I would love to be referred to as Derek Jeter. Yeah. I think he is just. I'm sticking on the baseball. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. We were uh, we were in Spain, um, you know, a year into mm. opening GNN. We were in Spain, like it was like what maybe maybe 18 months yeah. after we opened, and it yeah. was an awards trip for Commerce at yeah. the time, who was purchased by Mopfrey Insurance. And I remember having there at the one of the dinners, there was a guy, there was an agency owner, and I don't remember where he was from. And if Matt, we'll say he was from Florida. It doesn't mm. matter. Uh, he, I remember having a conversation with him and him telling me at that moment, like that we needed to get into large commercial risks, that yeah. that's, the, that's where the money is. And he almost poo pooed and laughed at personal lines. He was like, mm. yeah, no, no, no. You only want to do that for your high net worth or mm. your business owners. Like everything else is just like not worth it. You mm. can't, you can't make money in that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that, that's what Zach and I know. That's what we, that's what we are working towards. That's mm. where we're, we're networking at. Like mm. that's really conflicting. This guy's a respected large agency owner. Like mm -hmm. it's hard to listen to that. And same thing with Pete, like hearing like we're just known as the baseball guys. Mm. Like, are we in danger? Mm. And it's, it's interesting. I, he did not relate it to the story we had, which his was, guys, we got a problem. People are talking about us as the baseball guys. Where you and I heard it as, people are telling us who are already achieved success, mm. they're telling us the path you're going on is gonna be really rocky. Yeah. And they didn't say you'd fail, but they did say it will take you way too long and it'll be really tough the entire way. We at that, and that was 2011, obviously, we at that time didn't really, weren't really solving a problem in the real estate industry. We were just trying to trickle in there and see what was going on. Mm -hmm. But once we found a problem that we were solving, kind of like Pete and his team were solving the overhead injuries for pitching, mm -hmm. we're like, wait a minute, there's something here mm -hmm. that's way bigger than just liking real estate. Yeah, And that's the comparability that I saw with Pete. Yeah, They solved a problem, and then they just shut off the noise. Yeah. And they just went all in. Yeah. I, I think that, that once you've identified that and then you can you can you can realize that there's a lot of market mm. in that space of shared sharing that same problem, then it's it's more empowering than anything else. Cause like some people look at like, oh, it's just a small little small little fifty thousand homes being purchased in your state. There's seven million people in the state. Like, why would you do that? Mm. Well, when quickly you look at it and you're like, wait a second, if we write ten percent of that or five percent of that, that's yeah. That's more than, than every other agency in the state combined. Like, and that's where it was like very empowering. Mm. You know? Yeah, and I, I liked it a lot. I think Pete did such a good job explaining that meeting because that meeting felt powerful to us. Mm. We've had that time where we, we second guess, even when we were a little bit further into it, the shiny object syndrome is real. Mm -hmm. But they had that moment in the beginning, they had that meeting, the question was posed, who are the baseball guys? Mm -hmm. Name one other baseball guy out there. They couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And they realized that's when they realized they had the niche. That was such a powerful moment in the podcast and it stuck out to you and I because mm -hmm. we did not know anyone in the real estate space who only focused on people purchasing property. Right. We knew people like to insure homes, mm -hmm. but they didn't focus on people buying homes. Right, right. Problem solved. Yeah, no agency in Massachusetts to that point, and every, even arguably and since since we started, can say they built their entire business around that purchase point, that mm -hmm. time in someone's life when people are buying real estate, and that's that's something to be said. I mean, then you know, you you can't compete with a specialist at that level. No, no, you can't. And Pete did say a couple times that there are people doing a great job in his space um, that have 
either he's taught mm -hmm. with Eric and they are now building a great engine, or people are just happen to take a look at this model and say, we can do that too, and we might be better at XYZ part of it. Yeah. He roots for them. Because they're also solving the problem that he saw as well. Mm -hmm. And he's okay with that. Mm -hmm. He has some mixed emotions, but he's okay with that. Because he's so far ahead. Yeah. You know, like, like you just said, he's like so steamboating going. I think in the short term, he would have been very successful with grabbing people in other, in other you know, sectors. You sure. Know, whatever, football, whatever. Sure. He would have been successful in the short term, but it would have hit ceilings. Because you would have gotten to the point where, you know, you were very, very like a, what is it like a, an inch, an inch deep, mile wide, or whatever, mm -hmm. mile wide, inch deep. That that's really the kind of the level of intimacy you'd get with your clients. Is mm -hmm. like you know just enough to be dangerous, but not like the go-to person that they identify as the as the master of of, of mm -hmm. what we need mm -hmm. and the doctor of what, what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same thing with us. Is there's a lot of people in our space that insurance space that go after real estate, but they won't turn down larger risks. They won't turn down you know opportunities that come across. But we refer that out because mm -hmm. it does not fit the bullseye. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good part of the podcast. I like that a lot. So the second part of the podcast that we really loved and dove right into was his take on marketing against the competition. Now, we've talked about this briefly in other podcasts, but his example was amazing. Mm -hmm. CrossFit is a fantastic, and one you know is mm -hmm. very intimately, CrossFit has a cult following. Other places have a cult following too. Or CrossFit, let's just talk about that in general. He could very easily pick apart CrossFit for one or two things and maybe try to get a person from CrossFit to try Crusty Sports. Mm -hmm. And what did he say about that? Well, I mean, if you're, to elaborate on that too, I think it's known for those of you listeners who don't know enough, a lot about CrossFit. Yeah. Like, it, if you are at a CrossFit and you aren't following a good program, the coach might not be uh, focused enough on, on flexibility, mobility, and, and care, and they're just too focused on you know one one rep deadlifts, et cetera, mm -hmm. you're gonna get a lot of injuries. Sure. And those injuries can then create a lot of doubt in the client's minds, which would then be easy for him to say, hey, we're, we do it much safer over here. You won't run into the same issues, but you're gonna get the same results. Yeah. And if you're bashing, if, you, if you're using another, um, competitor as your sales tactic mm. you're like it's for one it's not attractive at mm. all but it's also like you're not focused on yourself you're mm. focused on someone else you're mm. just sh showcasing someone else like why you're not as bad as them instead your of why you're so as good as you, you know yeah. yeah and he said he said it right to your point he said i've never gained a client from making fun of crossfit i loved that because i don't know if i don't think we've ever publicly said anything but positive about Geico and Progressive, especially on social or newsletters or mm -hmm. website. We've never. Um, we see it all the time mm -hmm. across the industry where we see someone post on their Facebook page, personal or professional, look at this, and they white out the name. They say, look at this Geico declaration page. Look how bad this person was covered. And they didn't insure with me. Mm -hmm. Or they did insure with me. Mm -hmm. But they make this huge case about yeah. they're saving Geico's clients. I would argue they've never mm -hmm. won a case off that. Mm -hmm. Or they joke about, yeah. um, we've seen this a lot, or people joke about, you know, oh yeah, 15 minutes, that's great, until you have claim. Yeah. You know, and that's that's one yeah. of the big pitches, is like, oh yeah, well, 15 minutes, you can never be insured correctly in 15 minutes. Well, I don't know, maybe you can. And he's like, you're 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 running down a, a street that's a dead end. Like yeah, you, you can't you can't come back from that. It's a good way to say it. And the, you you're right. You focused on a problem that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. The client already got coverage through Geico, and if they didn't value the coverage, so what? Like they're not going to come to you and say, "Oh, I should have valued the coverage." Mm -hmm. You almost need to have them have that claim that not covered mm -hmm. and then come to you and say, I was wrong. No one wants to be proven wrong. Yeah. They don't want to be, they don't want their face rubbed in shit and say like, look, look how, look how, look how bad you were. Yeah. Like, come over here. Like, yeah. well, like we won't no, Cause we make mistakes too. Yeah. Geico could run the same campaign. Yeah. Like, well, they, Geico doesn't. No, no, they don't have to. They don't have to. And I think there's very few industries where that's effective. I think mm. maybe the, maybe like the, uh, communication industry like Verizon versus Sprint versus T-Mobile. Well, there's only three. 
Like maybe there's a few others. There's only mm. three. It's mm-hmm. like okay, well, mm-hmm. you know, it's easy to say we're we're better than them, and that's the only reason you should work with us. But in the insurance space, or in mortgages, or real estate, or any other industry, like there's thousands of options for mm. consumers. And if you're focused on selling, telling people why they made the wrong decision or they're with the wrong the what provider, like you're not, it's not attractive at all for the no. consumer. Consumer wants to hear why should I be working with you, not why should I, why did I make a bad decision or why am I. Why exactly. should I not work with them? They want to know your value, not the comparison. Yeah. And we need to focus more on our value, not the comparison. Because we don't like comparing ourselves to other independent brokers. It's, we're all part of the same community. We're all trying to solve a very similar problem mm-hmm. in different ways. Mm-hmm. Why all of a sudden are we going after the direct writers? What does it matter? Yeah. I mean, they're solving another problem. Yeah. It might be speed. Yeah. Uh, I think it goes back to you know really considering in, in your sales process, no matter what industry you're in, it's it's uh, am I confident in the value I'm bringing? And if yeah. I'm confident in the value I'm bringing, then I have a process that I'm going to uncover what you care about, and mm-hmm. then I'm going to offer make sure that the value is there. And you have nothing else to talk about. Nothing to you. worry about. Nothing. Yeah. You know, okay. No other questions. No. It's like the one time you should only talk about yourself. Right. Right. All right. So what's the third thing that we really enjoyed about Pete? The third piece of information that he gave that was really, really um, mm. uh, interesting, and we talked a lot about it afterwards, uh, is really about, uh, we relate this to really how to how to be recession-proof and how to make sure that you can grow uh, for as long as you want, uh, no matter what happens in the mm. market. You can talk yeah. about the quote that he used. I, so I love the quote, like you said. The quote, um, and I think I'm doing it verbatim, but Pete, sorry for it's a little off, was, if you can help your friend get out of pain, you've got a friend for life. And if you can help the friend's son get out of pain, you're recession proof. Mm-hmm. We've focused on that with referral partners. And, and how have we done that? Yeah, yeah. I, I love that quote. And it got us yeah. thinking in a lot of different directions, mm-hmm. but specifically with referral partners, you know, a lot of people ask like, how did you scale so many people to want to work with you? And yes, there's a lot of value propositions that we built in our arsenal after years of asking questions. And so you have a meeting with somebody and all of a sudden you're like, I know exactly what is going to work for you. And then yeah. here's the option that you create agreements and you move forward. But at its core and, and, and even to today, like the most important thing is figuring out like what matters to you and who matters to you. Yeah. And then go provide help. That's it. People want to work with and be friends with people that want to help them and like be friends and with trust. them. Yeah. yeah. So if 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 Zach, you are a referral partner mm-hmm. or a potential referral partner, and I know that your world is based around your kids, your your wife, and your uh, your support staff at work, mm-hmm. and your three referral partners that generate eighty percent of your business, those are the people I'm going to do work for. I'm mm. going to go try to create value for those people. Mm. If it's a realtor that you want an introduction to, or if it's a current realtor that does a lot of work for you, I'm going to go try to create value for them on your behalf. Mm. Loan processor that works for you as mm. a support role, well, that person's going to get a lot of my attention. Yeah. I think that goes a long yeah. way. And then the recession-proof comparison is no matter what goes on in that person's world. And I guess we can relate it recession proof to another insurance agent coming into that referral partner's world and saying, what would it take to earn your business, dear referral yeah. partner? That person's gonna take a deep breath and be like, well, wow. That has like improved the lives of my assistants. He's been super present and make sure he's at my family events mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, whatever's most important to that person. Uh, they might look at the insurance agent and say, hey, I'll toss you one one or two here or there, but I don't really have any problems. Mm-hmm. I'm nothing really you can do. Yeah. Um, but maybe I'll give you a couple just to check out your process. Mm-hmm. That's where you want to be with your referral relationships. It is okay for them to have another friend. Like yeah. It is not a solo relationship. It is not okay for someone to come in and solve a problem for them because mm-hmm. then you're in trouble. The only time we've ever lost referral partners is when we for, we stop focusing on their problems. Yep. And we stop focusing on helping those who help them. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, actually, you know, they used to help in this way, then now they don't. And that le- leaves the door open. Yes. That's the door. That's the only door you need to keep closed. Yes. You have to either be, and I don't think you have to pick one or the other, but if you're going to err, err towards the side of business, mm-hmm. um, because maybe you don't get as deep of a connection, Air towards the side of assistance, air towards the side of work milestones, air towards the side of, of helping them with their process. The really special part comes where Pete said though, is if you can find a way to be involved in their huge family, either gatherings mm-hmm. or being present with their anniversaries with their partner, being present with their birthdays of their children, you've really yeah. won a, a person. Yeah. And the randomness of a gift with that 
to yeah. the moon. Yeah, I think the combination is so powerful mm. because there, we we know we know those who, you know, on your anniversary, on your birthday, you'll get a card or something, but it'll feel like that was the only time all year that you heard from them. Yeah. And then those that the, who, who have done a good job at helping you build business or make introductions to other partners or, you know, do something really nice and kind for one of your support staff. Mm. But it's a one-off time and that's that's about as far as it goes. When you can combine both and, you know, do something really nice for them personally and their family and then also make sure that their their bread is buttered at work, you know, and you're helping out their support staff, man. Yeah. No one's, no one's touching you. No. So excellent pod with Pete. Really laid down a lot of good knowledge and that was our longest pod we've ever done it was almost 40 minutes but there are three massive takeaways that we took away how you how he found the niche how his partners talked about the problem where they figured it out um he talked really about being recession proof that was so amazing and we just talked about that and then you know what he really talked about why you should focus on your own marketing message and not really bash the competition because you're not creating any value mm-hmm. And it's super relatable, Excellent. super relatable for all of our listeners, no matter whether they're in the real estate industry or the insurance industry. Yeah. Because it's super, I mean, it, it applies to business. It's super mm. like, these are the core principles of business. Mm. And if you want to grow and scale a business, these are the things you need to focus on. Yeah. And I think we got really good feedback from the, you know, the interview style, which is a little shift up from what we've done in the past. Mm. And, you know, we're going to incorporate that where it matters. Mm-hmm. And we're not going to have random people on, but yeah. if, if the person can really, uh, can, can give us some nuggets of information that's then relatable to our audience. Mm-hmm. Audience, that's that was that's what matters. Game on. Game or on. as I say, play ball. <laughs> Episode 14. <laughs> ball on. <laughs>